Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Jay Davis. Today we're talking about astrology, the study of stars and planets in relation to human behavior. It's been around for thousands of years. Some people believe their astrological signs dictate their moods, their successes, and their failures. Some even believe their signs determine whom they love. Others say astrology is all false. They say it has no relation to science. People are wasting their time and sometimes their money if they believe it. But some people say they not only know their astrological signs, but they make decisions based on them. Many of these people check their horoscopes often on a daily basis and believe what they read is viable. I do believe in astrology. At first I wasn't for it, but like I realized I'm a Pisces and everything it explains basically me. Um, I don't believe in all of the like, oh, some relationships work, some relationships don't work. Like my boyfriend's a Gemini. I'm a Pisces. We're not supposed to be cool, but like we are. Like we're indecisive with different stuff. Um, I believe that my sign as a Taurus does reflect like a lot of the characteristics that I have in my personality and the relationship I have with other people. Um, I'm a Scorpio and it's like really hot-headed or like irrational but very loving and kind. And do you believe that? that yeah, because I am that. Others say astrology is all just a game of chance and probability. They say it's not supported by evidence. I feel like it's very general. I mean some stuff I can apply and say maybe it might match but like when someone comes up to me and be like, oh, or if I tell them I'm a Sagittarius and then they say, oh, you this and you that. And then I just feel like some of it is not true. So it could be misleading. I think they're fake because I don't think it actually defines someone as they are because I think other aspects come into play, like where someone grew up, maybe different. If someone's a Gemini and they grew up in Compton it's versus from somebody's Gemini and grew up in Manhattan. Two CSUN astronomy professors say they understand why some people might want to believe in it, but they're skeptical. And the truth is astrology is it's really based in mythology and it, it's superstition. It has really, we, we don't, you know, the roots of astronomy are in astrology as people were very superstitious. They wanted to know if the planets were in the birth constellation, but generally it's a bunch of hokum, you know, unfortunately it, it's just being superstitious. I don't believe in astrology. It's, it's fun to see your horoscope, but most of them are pretty vague and very, a little bit too positive, maybe. So I personally don't subscribe to it, but at the same time, like, uh, I don't know, like different people get different things out of astrology. The thing is, like, there's no scientific value in it because it doesn't predict anything. There's no hypothesis you can test. There's no like, hey, we found this result, like it matches with our prediction. Like, it's kind of just, uh, it seems arbitrary to me personally. But if someone has any evidence, like I'd be willing to reconsider. So is the practice of astrology helpful or harmful? On Point's Gianni Navarro has more on the story. Thank you, Jade. Today I'd like to give a warm welcome and introduce our panelists for today. We have Austin Muse, an astrologer based in Santa Monica, Peter Marston, a communication studies professor at CSUN, and Vladimir Lira, an astronomy professor at CSUN as well. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you. Um, I'd like thank you. to thank you. I'd like to start the discussion by saying that we went on campus and got um, students' um, opinions on astrology and what they knew about it. Uh, they kind of had a general sense of what their zodiac sign was, but they didn't really know about astrology itself and the history. So Austin, I'd like to start with you and um, kind of telling me what astrology is from your perspective. Uh, from my perspective, the easiest way to look at astrology is actually ancient psychology. Uh, astrology has been around for over 5,000 years and it's actually one of the world's oldest sciences. And in that respect, it's, it's an enduring representation of man's fascination with cycles along with fascination with nature and how that nature interplays into their personal lives. Do you have anything to say about that or add on about your perspective about what astrology is to you? Well, there's certainly been a long tradition in astrology that the uh, positions of the heavens and the planets and the stars have some influence on our personality, on our futures. Um, and, and that's largely the component of astrology that I think most skeptics are struggling with. Professor Lira? I'd say that I agree with most of what uh, Austin said, except that he used the word science. Astrology is not that. Astrology has been shown to not have any validity, either theoretically or, or, um, or 
when it comes to the, the data. So when you try to look at it, either at the concepts that it's trying to say, the things that it's trying to say, that works, or the evidence, when you try to look at the, the, the evidence, you cannot find anything in it to support either the theory or the data. So I agree that astrology has a history. It does come from this very old tra tradition, but that, uh, that tra tradition has been challenged since the, the en en Enlightenment, and we cannot really look at the claims that astrology makes and either based on theory or, uh, or experimentation and say that it works. So, yeah, with, just with, with that in, in, in mind, that we are not talking about something that can be called uh, science if it, if it has absolutely no, no validation. So it has its place in, in history, but it should be called a pseudo uh, science. It is more of a, a valid uh, uh, name to, to, to describe what it is. Yeah, I think most people kind of have like a half-half opinion about what astrology is, so I understand that. Um, Austin, I understand you do uh, astrology readings as your profession. Can you kind of describe what that is and what you do during that time? Uh, generally speaking, people come to me uh, seeking some sort of analysis on their life, where they're at, where they're headed, how to get there. Um, I generally work with them within whatever spiritual or theological framework they're coming to me from. That's not my job to interpret their own you know, sense of purpose or sense of self, but I try to uh, help them based on the strengths and weaknesses presented in their astrological makeup to plot a uh, more meaningful, more purposeful course in their life and try to help them, you know, uh, accept, understand, and breed more happiness within themselves. And um, how do you think astrology helps your clients or just people in general? Um, astrology has helped my clients in, in so, so many ways, but really just generally, if, if you understand that certain things are going to be easy in your life and certain things are going to be not so easy in your life, just even knowing that can breed a sense of emotional acceptance, which makes it uh, easier for you to just kind of like accept things the way that they are, not try to fight them so much. Uh, but it, it can help in a, in a multitude of ways, whether it's economic, relationship-wise, uh, sp for sp spiritual seeking reasons, for emotional developmental reasons. It, it kind of touches upon all areas, and it's a very, very deep, uh, deep science with, with um, a lot to say, a lot to say for anyone who's looking for that kind of information. Do you think that it does something for your clients that wouldn't also be done by... Uh meeting with a pastor or a life coach or a professor? Um, there's a lot of people who would say yes, uh, just because that that's, that's the way that they relate to themselves. You know, just like someone may strictly relate through a religious context or they may strictly relate through an emotional context or they may be more nonverbal and just relate through dance or some sort of other methodology. I, whoever's drawn to what I do or drawn to astrology in general, I feel has, has some form of destiny with it. And so it's not my job to interpret that, but just to help the person where they're at and do what they're wanting to be doing in life. Professor Marston, do you have anything to add on about um, what he does? Astrology well, I, I would say then it sounds like it's not a science in the sense that Vladimir is talking about uh, here. I absolutely agree somebody who is not religiously self-defined or oriented is going to go to a pastor and uh, uh, somebody who isn't uh, perhaps a self-absorbed narcissist wouldn't go to a life coach but so people are going to find ways in which they identify themselves uh, and, and, and work with that uh, but it seems to me that astrology may be making the type of psych scientific claims that Freudian psychoanalysis uh, did that have now been largely discarded in favor of cognitive behavioral therapy, which is seen as something much softer than, uh, than a science. Professor Lear, do you have anything to add on to that? I, 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 um, I agree with, with what, you were, I mean, what, you, what you said, that um, it seems that um, we are interested then in completely different things. Like, um, if you want to make people happier, great. I mean, like, we can use more, I mean, everybody can, can use more happiness. But, what I'm interested in is how the universe works. 
And the question that I look at, does astrology have anything to do with how the universe works, how stars work? It doesn't. The claims that it is, it, it's making have no ground in, in theory, in, in physics as we, we know it. Stars, you know, they are not something that, I mean, the, the, the claims that it's making is that the pattern that stars make in the sky have something to do with your personality. Uh, that's, a, that's a claim of physics and, and biology and psychology too. And these three fields have, uh, through um, its history, um, disproved the, these claims that astrology makes. So as long as, as we agree with the, with the fact that we are interested in different things, like one thing is uh, to give, you know, as, as Anson was uh, saying, to give people meaning, to, and, and people will find meaning in, in uh, whatever way they, they, they want to. That's what uh, the, uh, the main claim of existentialism is, right? That you, you are free to, to, to give your life what, whatever meaning you want. And what, uh, what on, on science we are interested in, which is to, to understand how the universe works. As long as these two things do, do not clash, that's fine. Well, if I, if I can note even one thing that interests me in astrology is when they talk about positions of the planet, of the stars and the patterns, the patterns of the stars are optical illusions created by distance and parallax. They are completely arbitrary. Two stars in a constellation may be far further apart than two stars in two different constellations, even stars on opposite sides of the planet. Is this, is this true or not true? Um, well, the distances between the stars is so big that the night sky seen from the Earth and the night sky seen from Mars look quite much like, uh, you know, uh, you would look at the night sky and they would look pretty much the, uh, the same. But two different locations in the galaxy, you would already have a completely uh, different vision of, of the sky. Also, the stars that we see, you are only seeing in a small volume of the, uh, the galaxy. So what we, are, what we are looking at is uh, uh, um, how, the, how, how the stars in the galaxy look like from our neighborhood only to a very small depth, and there is no, no connection between them because these stars are so far that when we look at them, we lose the notion of depth. So as you, uh, you, uh, you mentioned, two stars that are close in the sky may actually be quite far uh, away from, from, from each other in the third dimension that we miss when we look at the, the sky. So that's... Uh, so, um, that's one of the reasons, actually, why on, on, th on theory grounds, astrology makes no sense, because the constellations, they are completely arbitrary. Now, if people want to use that uh, completely arbitrary um, pattern of stars to find meaning in life, that's a completely di uh, different question. Use it as sort of an inkplot. An inkplot? An inkplot, where they can see meaning and purpose and differences and choices. Mm where they aren't necessarily there objectively. That's correct. See, this, this goes back to the point where our society's been like kind of psychically neutered from a lot of this information from birth. And so it's, it's hard for me to really contextualize a lot of what's, what's being said here. But I'll just start by saying, when we're looking at psych, uh, astrology, there's, there's three different types of time. There's, there's time like you have it on your watch. There's time like you have it on your calendar. And then there's psychological time. And what we're dealing with in astrology is actually psychological time. And it really doesn't have so much to do with rocks in space. Like, that's, that's definitely not where we're coming from. We're actually coming from a, a way to gauge this, this and put terms to this psychological clock that's happening within society, that's happening within the cosmos, that's happening within the microcosm of the macrocosm. I, I would even go as far as to say that we're one of the only... Uh, period. This is one of the only periods in history where the, the microcosm has been so sucked out of the macrocosm and thinking that they're unrelated somehow. So it's like the, the fish not thinking it's part of the ocean or something. So I think that no matter what, you know, we do understand that space and the tides of the moon and things like that have, have an effect on us. They have an effect on the human body. They have an effect on nature. So really, when you're dealing with astrology, you're dealing with the reflection of the self within nature. 
and uh, it's hard to, to go into the full history, but I, I would just say it, it's less to do with rocks in space and, and exact uh, placements and more about psychological time and ways that people represented that in the past and how to help people through using that psychological calendar. But in your practice, would you uh, maintain or suggest that different stars have different effects on different people? Or does the universe and the cosmos and the moon and the tide have the same effect on all people? No. It, it, when you look at someone's chart, they've got so many different aspects to themselves. As we know, people are complex. Everyone's totally different. So the way that you know, all of your aspects make up you, it, the outside universe is going to affect you way differently than, say, her. Uh, you being male, she being female, there's going to be a difference there. But even, you know, you could go down the list. There's a, a million different ways. So my job as an astrologer is really to pick that out and be like, okay, this person's chart is going to affect them in the greater universe this way because of X, Y, and Z attributes that have been pre-identified in the past based on observation. Okay, now I wouldn't disagree that there's a difference between a man and a woman, but is there a difference between a Libra and a Leo? It, that, it all depends on the, the full chart. It, it, you can't really boil it down to Libra, Gemini, you know, this whole situation. It's, that's that's bubblegum astrology. That's not really what I do. Um, that's, that's what the common if public I, knows. If I can sure. complement yes. that. You're saying that your claims have nothing to do with rocks and space, but that's exactly the kind of claim that that, uh, that astrology makes, so that the, the pattern of planets against uh, the background of stars somehow influence our lives. Uh, and uh, you yourself gave the, the example of uh, how it is shown that the moon and tides influence, you know, the, the earth and uh, in, in physical ways. Um, actually, that claim is true and has been validated by physics, but that claim doesn't come from astrology. Actually, you know, comes from the universal law um, of gravitation, and you can precisely calculate how that works. It goes with the cube of the distance. So um, the gravitational influence of the doctor that that made the the, the delivery in your birth uh, is actually much much bigger than the gravitational influence of the the moon. And the other planets being much further out than than they are, their influence will be much much less. So. So um, I do not see how you are not talking about uh, the influence of uh, you know rocks in 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 uh, in, uh, in, uh, in space, since you gave that uh, example, and you're saying that your job as a, an astrologer is to um, you know to try to give people's meanings. Well, my job as a, an educator and an uh, astronomer is to, uh, to, uh, to educate the, uh, first the, the students and then the, the general people on what, is, uh, uh, and, and on what is science and what isn't. So I wouldn't have any problems with what, what you do if you're not saying that your claims are scientific. They are not, and yet you're saying that they are. And is it all astro astrologers that claim that it's science or just, you know, is it that a general statement because I know people keep I don't really ever make that claim that yeah. like it's it's uh, in science in a traditional uh, modern context I think really we have very little to do with actual modern science because we're coming from a very different framework yeah I just don't think we operate in the same spheres and have the same um, notions of what's what's you know, meaningful or important in the cosmos even. So it's kind of an apples and oranges thing, and I have no need to, you know, like prove or disprove astrology to, uh, but at the same time, I do think it's worthy to note that the, the original scientists in many ancient contexts were the monks. Um, the monks were the ones with the free time to like go out and study the stars, go out and study the universe. And a lot of people in ancient European civilizations that were the most erudite people in the, in the civilization, people like ship captains, they were all avid astrologers. These people were very intelligent. They were part of the intelligentsia of the time. So um, 
you know, it, it's people find meaning in whatever they need to. I don't, I don't. Need to but those it. people also believe the Earth was the center of the solar system, that life generated spontaneously from filth, and all sorts of other things that, fortunately, we've gotten past from believing those, those, those types of things. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, astrology is a, a relic from the times when we did not understand well enough how the universe works. We look at the night sky. If you have ever been in a place uh, that is dark enough to see the uh, uh, the sky, it is it's it's uh, it's it's uh, absolutely uh, majestic. It's uh, it's uh, a sight that hits your your eye when when you see the whole uh, sky with uh, stars on all, all all over you know like you you cannot count them i mean and it's, and, and, you, it's and it's enveloping it is yeah is you are inside the, the dome. early appeal of astrology yeah. indeed i mean it looks uh, uncountable I, and and it's a sight that uh, we lost in our times because we are drowned in the lights of the uh, the modern me megalopolis, but the uh, the the, uh, the ancients they were uh, seeing that every night. They were always in 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 areas that, for our uh, standards, were absolutely dark. Right. So it was a constant thing in their lives. Uh, when when you are looking at something that present and that overwhelming that you absolutely don't uh, don't understand, that you have no idea how it works. We are a species that likes to find the co correlations in things, right? We try to, to connect the dots even when these dots are uncorrelated. So uh, it made sense back then when we did not understand what it is that we were seeing to imagine that the sky was there for signs. That's actually something you find in, in many cultures. But to, to continue with this relic in our age, when we understand already a great deal about the laws of physics and chemistry, something that to me doesn't make much sense. And that's true that, that the, the ancients, I mean, the, the erudite people of the, the time, they were practicing astrology. Indeed, Johannes Kepler was, uh, you know, was the person who found about the laws of, of motion. We describe him as the uh, the last wizard because he was the last one to to practice both uh, astronomy and astrology. Like back then, uh, astronomy was not yet um, was not yet uh, uh, developed, and uh, astronomy comes from astrology in the sense that it was the astrologers that were. Uh, measuring right the uh, the position of planets and and stars, they actually uh, stole uh, our name. Also, I mean we are uh, we are the ones who who should be called the uh, the astrologists, yeah. just like you know I, biologists I, or or, I think or, or a geologists. Big debate too. about um, whether astrology is science or not, but I think there's a lot more to astrology than just science and and not. Um, I want to get more into astrology and kind of what that is. And I know people, especially my generation, believe in their zodiac signs and horoscopes. So I really want to get into that and kind of discuss what that is. Uh, you know, if we want to talk about base level astrology, like, okay, your sun sign is Taurus or your sun sign is Libra. Um, if, if you're just looking at a sun sign, that, that really... Uh, the sun sign deals with more of like what you want to achieve, what you what your really main focus or path in life could be. Um, but again, the moon sign would deal with your emotional temperament, and the rising sign will be how you know what skill sets you're given to achieve those goals. And those are your three kind of main go-tos as far as your prime drivers of your personality in a lot of ways, uh, dealing in astrology. But at the same time. Um, you know, just just speaking uh, generally, I think that astrology is being used in society in a thousand different ways. If you look at car companies' logos, if you look at corporate logos, if you look at all these different 
things that are out there symbolically, they're all rooted in astrology and they're being used to market things psychologically to people. So people can either understand astrology or not, but I feel like we've been a bit disempowered by not understanding at least the bare symbolism of what it used to mean. Um, because these, you know, there's, there's definitely elements of society still utilizing astrology for uh, purposes that may or may not benefit us. Perfect. And I think to just, you know, just a general question, um, I know people believe in it and don't believe it, but believe in it, but why is it so still pop so popular in today's society? You know, with so much evidence of not being scientific, there's still a lot of people who still do believe in it. So I'll give each one of you a chance to, to answer that question. As far as uh, why it's so popular, I, I think that deep down everyone, you know, what's, what's the question? Know thyself, right? So I think deep down the, the quest is always going to be how can I understand myself better? Astrology is an avenue, if people are open to it, for self-understanding. Now, it's not for everyone. Not everyone relates to themselves in the same way. But at the same time, I think that, you know, uh, that's why it's so popular because deep down we all want to know ourselves and our potentialities because we all want to be better than we are right now. Well, you know, I often wonder why astrology is still popular and other uh, arts like phrenology, the determining of personality with bumps on the head and, you know, are not. I do think that Austin is on to something when he says it's sort of culturally ingrained in, in, our, in our art forms and in our literature and, and, and things like that. Uh, but largely I think it's popular because people like to think that there's something, you know, mysterious uh, and uh, that can only be tapped in through these aesthetic sort of models and I'm not saying that that's not the case. But again, I, the, my main concern I have is, 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 is what I generally see as a pretense among astrological believers that it is scientific, that it is veridical, that indeed the positions of planets and so on are affecting them or fading them or they don't have choices. I mean, astrology works mostly by a psychological principle called the Forer effect, which is that if you say something to, that's general to somebody, they will interpret it as, you know, as specific. So if I was to say Vladimir, there's a big opportunity coming around the corner. He goes, oh, I'm going up for tenure. So he interprets it as something very specific. It's the same way in which a fortune cookie works or uh, a psychic works in a cold reading. And I don't, and it, and it troubles me when, when people give up their agency to uh, such general statements in relation to their specific circumstances. It is uh, indeed. Unfortunately, uh, we are out of time. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. Sorry, Vladimir. Yeah, sorry, sorry okay. Professor. Right. Um, before we go, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out today and joining us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media at CSUN On Point. You can hear us on KCSN 88.5 FM on Sunday mornings at 5.30. You can watch us on Santa Clarita Valley Television on Sunday afternoons at 5 and on LA 36 on Thursday nights at 9.30. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Jay Davis. Mm -hmm.